Well, Garth, it's uh, it's good to have you here. And uh, there's a couple things that we want to ask you. First and foremost, uh, you've just added a fish show. How do you keep the stamina when you have to do these shows? We, we were just talking about your show you did in New York. I mean, you've got you've got two shows coming up here that you do in one day. How do you keep that energy and that stamina going for two shows a day? Oh man, it's just it's so much fun, and it's it's nothing. It's it's not working, guys. Trust me, man. The last time I worked, I was roofing houses when I was twenty three. The last time I worked, this is this is nothing but joy, and uh, it's just. It's just fun. It's stupid fun. We call it championship wrestling. Put the music. It's uh, it's just a lot of it's just a lot of fun up there. Well, and you're traveling too. This time uh, you're touring with your wife, so no doubt uh, you're probably sick of packing her luggage all over the place. But it's got to be it's it's got to be kind of fun uh, traveling with Trisha and doing these type of shows. Yeah, man. She she's my best friend. You no, know, she's she's been my best friend in this business for you know quite some time. We kind of started touring together. The first time she was ever an opening act for anybody, it was us. And the mm. first time we ever had an opening act, it was her. So we've uh, we've kind of did this our whole career together. Mm. But now getting to do it as husband and wife is even more fun for me because uh, she's just funny, she's sweet, mm. and uh, she's so talented. So and yeah, she's this, a great this, this cook one. too. That helps. <laughs> oh my gosh, guys! This, this woman can do anything. She's uh, she made a cake last night, but it's one of those. I don't know, seven layer looks like a wedding cake kind of thing. Mm. She made it last night and well we we all got sick because we just we just kept eating on it and eating on it and eating on it. It's uh, she's phenomenal. How do your shows, Garth, on the road when you when you do these tours, how do your shows on the road differ from the shows that you do when you're in Las Vegas? Oh well the one man show, you know, was was all by itself. So it was it was more of an influence uh thing here. Uh, I'd probably best explain it with a song called Call in Baton Rouge. On an acoustic guitar, you can only do so much. Mm -hmm. But Call in Baton Rouge, you turn Jimmy Manning loose on that fiddle, and that crowd goes to a whole different level. And you kind of get to take the ride, mm -hmm. you know, with them. But each show's kind of different, too, because people will bring their signs. You'll see what happens. People will bring their signs. They'll let you know where they want the night to go. So it's kind of funny. There's a, there's a list of songs you have to do that you better do. Mm -hmm. That if I'm a if I'm a Garth fan, I'm going to want to hear. But the other songs in the show are all pretty much where the people take it, and that that makes it new for everybody every night. Well, you've got these millennials that you show now, and I thought about that with Colin Baton Rouge. Do they know what you're talking about when you say you need a cup of coffee and a couple of dollars change? Do they know what you need that for? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Uh, you know, for us old timers, we get that. <laughs> yeah, man, it's it's funny how you can sit there and sing a lyric, mm. and then just realize, holy cow, this, what he's talking about doesn't even exist anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, but that's and that's even from you know our own stuff. Uh, not to mention the stuff you cover, like you're talking about the Vegas show. You know, uh, Jim Croce's operator. That whole great last line was says, "Thank you for your time. You can keep the dime." Right. And, and, you know, yeah, my kids are like, uh, well, well, first of all, my kids just sing along anyway. It's kind of like we did, you know, uh, if you ever, if you're a Bob Dylan fan, you don't know what you're saying half the time because you don't know what he's saying half the time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so that's, uh, so you just kind of sing along and it makes them for a lot of fun. Are you getting a lot of younger, or do you get a lot of younger kids in the audience, Garth? I mean, are you getting these 18 to 30 year olds, uh, that come to see Garth Brooks? <laughs> The, you know, data is everything right now. And the people selling the tickets will tell you that on this tour, 48% half of the arena was 10 years old and not even born yet last time we toured. Wow. So it's, uh, it's fun, man. You're seeing the faces you hoped you'd see again. Mm -hmm. And then, and then these whole crop of new faces and they bring a great energy with them. Well, let me, let me give you a little trivia here that you may be interested in okay. because you came, uh, you came to Billings on May the 15th of 1991. And you were touring with the Judds at right. the time, and you you were their opening act. Well, we we have been on the we Mark and I have been on the air for thirty years, and we went backstage and we had an opportunity to meet you. And your No Fences album was out at that time, and at that point you had sold three million units of your No Fences album. And we took back a plaque that had your picture and CDs and everything on it. And I've got it hanging right here behind us. And it says, happy third anniversary to Cat Country Radio, Garth Brooks, many years uh, in the future. 
and we've been here 30, and here you are coming back almost close to our 30-year anniversary. So for us, it's and you, it's another almost 30 years, and for you, it's almost another 149 million albums <laughs> later. Can you believe that you're still doing this thing after so many years, the way the country music is going? No, man, and, and you know... The, the the gift is yes the, the the greatest gift I ever received was getting to go home and raise my babies. Second greatest gift I ever received, also from God and the people, was getting to do this again. And that's the crazy thing. You're exactly right to think that you got to do this this long. Mm -hmm. You're doing it on this level this late in your career. The great thing is about that show. I can mention five crew guys that were on that show. Those those basic five crew guys will be the basic five crew guys for this show. Wow. Um, same drummer, same piano player. Uh, just it's it's crazy, man. It's 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 so much fun to travel with your best buddies, and you're playing music that's hopefully stood the test of time. Congratulations to you guys uh, oh, on thanks. 30 years. Uh, we we uh, we've enjoyed every second of this ride, man. Yeah, and uh, boy, we've all seen changes, haven't we, in this business? No doubt about that. Yeah, man. They just did a uh, Randy Travis. They just did a tribute to him here. He's he's you know he, he's had some. Uh, some medical problems and um, some financial problems. So the whole town got together and did a benefit concert. Randy was there. But here come all these acts from when you guys started up, when you started up the radio station from that era. And it was cool, man. Some of them look exactly the same as they did. Some of them don't. And uh, But it was it was a pretty cool little family reunion. But when you think about all the changes, like you said, it's it, it's gone through a lot. Well, we know we know you're a busy man. We know you got a lot to do. We appreciate all your time, and and we wanted to ask you uh, just one more thing. We've added the fish show now, and uh, those tickets are going to go on sale tomorrow. And you will be be doing two shows on Sunday. So you're going to do a show Friday, two shows Saturday, two shows on Sunday. What uh, what do you do during your downtime, Garth? When you when you visit some of these areas, uh, do you try to get back home to recover a little bit? Do you spend a little time out? Uh, in the outlying areas, seeing the country. I mean, what does a guy like Garth Brooks do in his downtime when he's in a city and he's doing a tour for three to five days? Well, you know, we're, we're lucky enough to um, have things that, that we do. We do some kids' camps. So it's like, be sure we'll, we'll do book signings sometimes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's it's um, it's pretty cool. Here's the, here's the kind of the crux of it all. I don't know why, but for some reason, we, we've got about 54, 56, depending on the city crew and for some reason we only buy black clothes i don't know why i don't know <laughs> if it's a rule yeah. or what but we do everything together we're a team mm -hmm. everything band and crew so we look like this little black cloud kind mm -hmm. of going around your city you can't hide us because there's so many of us and we're all in black so we'll, we'll get out and we'll go around and uh enjoy the you know enjoy the sights and mm -hmm. enjoy the food mostly uh you get around and you find the best places to eat and, and what everybody recommends when you take the bad crew there. Well, we're sure looking forward, uh, Garth, to having you come back. Uh, you, this will be about your fourth trip here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that people are very, very excited. We're very appreciative of, of the fact that you want to do five shows and give everybody an opportunity. We talked yesterday, Mark and I did, and we don't think there is any other artist. It, it doesn't matter whether it George Strait or the Rolling Stones that could sell out five shows, and you continue to do it. It's just mind-boggling. Oh, that's that's very sweet, man. I, I got to tell you, I just think it's the it's the loyalty of the country music audience, and uh, I'm not so sure on that George Strait thing. I know I'd buy five shows myself. Mm -hmm. to, uh, that's to true. Go watch it. That's true. He may sell five. He could possibly, <laughs> I guess. Well, we're all looking forward to seeing you. I don't have any pull in Nashville, and I only have. One thing, a favor I would ask, why isn't John Denver in the Country Music Hall of Fame? Boy, I, I don't know. John was one of those guys, uh, you know, they, they let guys like Elvis and like Kenny in there, and they're, they're that cross-genre. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, he kind of got stuck in the middle, I guess. But, yeah. you know, it's funny. I have never, ever thought of his name in the Country Music Hall of Fame, so that's a... That's a great point. Yeah. Well, Garth, take care. Uh, rest up a little bit. Save that voice. We're looking forward to you coming in June. And uh, God bless you and your crew for picking our town because we are, uh, really appreciate it. I know everybody's excited to have you here. And we look forward to seeing you when you get here.
Thank you, man. We picked Billings as a favor to myself. I, I love that place. It's always been a great supporter of country music and a great, uh, great supporter of, of Garth Brooks. Uh, when Garth couldn't feed himself, you guys fed me, and uh, mm. nobody wanted to see us. You guys showed up. So looking forward to it. Love you guys, and uh, good luck to everybody uh, tomorrow. I hope uh, everybody that wants a ticket gets one. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Garth. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye. Bunch. See